All right, welcome to Doggy Diamond a year later. I appreciate everyone who's been messaging me, asking questions about the previous four videos. Um, using Flow Lab in the classroom has gone extremely well. As you can see, um, I've definitely modified the original Doggy Diamond over the course of a year just messing around. So um, let's jump into it. As you can see, I just picked up an axe and I can now destroy spikes. I added animation to the spikes. Let's see, I have um, cannons that shoot out cannonballs. All right, we got disappearing blocks. Uh, what else did I have here? I have a bunch of new things. Uh, people, um, students kept emailing about portals. They, um, what else? Axe tool, hidden blocks, uh, disappearing, reappearing spikes, spikes animation, 3D background. Uh, I have coins emitting from chests, kind of like a sprinkler system type deal. Um, I also figured out how if you, instead of the bad guy, uh, enemy sprite, whenever it touches you losing health, I actually have it added just a little extra different dimension that if you touch the enemy sprite you will actually be transported randomly uh, anywhere onto the screen let's see uh, also um, the way you get to the next level is if you collect 500 uh, endpoints uh, i also have a portal key over here let's see yep this portal key will also get you there as well. So let's see, let's just kind of go through the list. I'm gonna do this video a little differently. So for the portal, I'm gonna show you here, click on it. The behaviors for the portal is you would click on, or you would add a collision trigger. And then I have next level two. So when you click on it, you switch that to doggy. And when you click on that, you have level two. Um, I think before you do that, you have to add a game level. You go down to game levels here in the middle, and you just click new level, and then you'd rename it level two, or you can keep it, you know, the new level, but I always like to rename it. And when you click on that, you click load. Oh, I gotta move it back over, sorry. There we go. And um, I've added some pictures in the background for my background this time. And uh, I also included a portal so that if you wanted to restart it and try to get all the coins, you could replay it. Okay, next for the cannon, I'm going to go ahead and click on the cannon, edit sprite. See if anything with physics. I have movable, solid, affected by gravity. I'm just showing you all the different properties. Um, I'm going to click on the behaviors. And I'll put the link for the game uh, below so that if um, I prefer the students to do it manually, but you can just do a, a copy and paste. You can click on that and then copy it and then input it into your game. I would advise against this if you're learning the program. It kind of takes the fun out of learning the program, in my opinion. Uh, but if you're in a pinch and you're just, you know, you're just designing games um, for the fun of it, you can always just do a copy and paste. And I've done that with some of the more complex coding um, when I'm shorter on time. So uh, go ahead and pause the video if you're interested in doing a canon. You have the always trigger. You have the proximity. Notice how it's expanded so that anytime my player sprite, right? So I, cl I clicked on proximity and doggy and I increased the proximity, made that go to 500. I would obviously type in 500 versus clicking that, change the output closest object found. So whenever my dog comes within this proximity circle, the cannon will start shooting. Uh, you'll need a timer trigger. 
uh, change that to 30th of a second, repeat forever so that it'll just keep on repeating. You'll need an emitter. You need to create a cannonball and have that rotate. And this, a change expired after. So this shows you how hard it's going, the angle, and then how uh, when it'll expire. If you don't change that, it'll just keep on going. It'll only be really short. And then I added a sound effect, right? Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and go to the cannonball. All right, so going to the cannonball, you I click on, um, I just made a cannonball. It's not the really best looking fiery cannonball, um, but I added just a bunch of crazy colors to it. Uh, I don't have an animation, so it's just going to turn on its own. And here is the behavior so that whenever it collides with the dog, I have it destroyed. And then always uh, proximity. And let me give you back. There we go. Distance 32 output. Again, you can always press pause on the video. And then I have point at. So this is the code for the cannonball. Again, I'm just going through these quickly for any of those. Any of this, uh, I was getting a lot of messages about any of the extras. I'm thinking about maybe doing individual videos, but I wanted to kind of mow through this quickly. Okay, next we have the axe tool. So once you, you know, click on a new sprite and you've created an axe, either you're using one of the prefabs or you create a completely new uh, uh, axe. I did an animation so that it swings. Again, I'm going through this part quickly because I'm assuming by now you're uh, more familiar with the program. So you can navigate. Let's see, physics, I've got that changed to enable collisions. Uh, behaviors, collision spikes, so that whenever the axe um, whenever the axe hits the spike, and it does need to touch it, so if, if you run too fast into the spike, it won't just, you know, let's say you jump on it or something, uh, you will take damage. So you have to con you have to wait for that axe to start swinging, and then you have to touch it without it touching your body. Um, so I have collision, destroy, and then the proximity. Proximity, uh, again, we're in the axe. So whenever the axe comes to within proximity, uh, the uh, spikes, so here's the distance, then it'll start swinging. That's the animation for swing, which I just showed you. So just again, to show you what that looks like. Let me go ahead, OK, and play. All right. So you see right now the axe isn't swinging, but when I get close to it, you see how the axe is swinging? And now it's swinging, it'll take that. Got to jump on it. So that's how you make um, an axe or a weapon uh, destroy different things. I thought that was a cool little feature. All right, next, um, hidden blocks. Can you find the hidden block here? The block that will disappear when your uh, main player touches it? It's kind of tricky. Once you know what block it is, you'd be able to figure it out. So I believe it is this block, and it is slightly different than the one. You see how it just, it just has a couple little different jagged edges. So this block, once you, you could, so what I, what I do is I'll clone that, but then I'll, I'll change it, or you don't need to clone it. I'll make a, a similar looking pattern so that it blends in. And physics, I have is solid. Behaviors, it's very simple. Whenever your main character, again, my doggy, touches it, it destroys it. So it'll disappear. That's a fun little one to do, like hidden traps. Or as you can see down here, I actually have a hidden, kind of like in Mario, uh, if you find the trap door, you can bypass uh, the game, which isn't as fun, but let's say you play the fun for 15, or play the game for 15 minutes, and then you stumble on that trap door, you know, that's kind of, uh, the thinking behind it. So that's the trapdoor one. Very straightforward. Uh, nice little fun element. 
All right, so next we have the disappearing spikes, disappear and reappearing spikes. Again, you'll want to add whatever sprite. If you notice my spikes for the ones that disappear and reappear are a different color. Physics is solid. Behaviors. All right, you have a timer for auto start. So I just it just starts on its own. I have that change. Again, you can change the different dimensions. I have it to repeat. And then also a twentieth of a second. So next you'll need a toggle. Notice where I have the out to uh, sorry go into next and in your out one I have a number to get I have that set to 100 and then out two I have that number set to zero so zero through 100 and then enable true false and then your numbers the out goes to the alpha okay that's what's going to make it invisible and uh, uh, disappear reappear so to speak all right so you get the timer, toggle, number, number, enabled, and alpha. Again, if you're in a crunch, you can just copy that and paste it into your uh, game. Um, make sure I got that loop start at one for the toggle. The number, I just have it 100. Enabled, there's nothing there. And alpha, nothing there. Okay, so make sure with the toggle you have it started it looping so that it continues and then start at one. All right, another quick thing you can do is um, on the spikes, I added just a quick, and I'll be a pretty janky looking <laughs> animation. Uh, so going back to your original spikes, I just added, you know, you'll see the kind of drip and you see the different, and I really didn't do the best job, but up close, it looks like a, a big pile of mess, right, when it's enlarged. But if you go back to the game, and how small it is and far away, you know, it looks like, most well, still looks pretty bad, but you get the point. <laughs> and there's movement, and it does add a nice little um, uh, dimension to the game. Okay, uh, one of the things I added to this game was the background. You see this cool background here? So I looked up 8-bit, you know, background, and then I found that. I thought that was pretty neat. So you want to do the layer on background because that way you see how it's lighting up and I really don't want to mess with it because it does get finicky when you move it and it does become problematic um, but this is what I use for my background so I went online and I just typed in 8-bit background try to find a big one and then I uploaded that to the library um, you can do this that way or I think if you did edit sprite, add sprite, let me go back to layer, make sure you switch back to game world. Um, so if I did layer, background, and I did, uh, I clicked on, I'll do it here, create. When you create it, you go to edit sprite, and then you can upload here, right? And you'd want to have your file downloaded to, um, you know, download. So if I did uh, 8 bit, background uh, game and just check my images like this would be a, this would be a pretty neat one if you're doing um, a scrolling like where your characters you kind of walking in the woods or this one would be a desert um, because this has a, a, a cutoff here here to where if you did you could you need like four or five of them side by side just that one but you'd go side by side so you'd want it to look to where it would flow and uh, so that's that.